Okay, this happy birthday doesn't go to a person, mm -mm. per se. It was only the country's second super highway when it was built, and tomorrow, the Maine Turnpike turns 75 years old. Hundreds of Mainers worked to cut down trees, design and build a highway system from Kittery to Portland, then later on to Augusta. Thousands more have spent careers maintaining it and collecting the tolls that keep it running. The 109-mile stretch of Maine Turnpike between Kittery and Augusta is one of the state's busiest stretches of road. It carries 10% of the state's traffic and about 55% of the state's freight. It all began with a plan to relieve some of the pressure mounting on Route 1. By the 40s, uh, it was taking people a good half a day by car to get from Kittery to Portland on Route 1. Right before exit 44, it, the current... It took two years to build the first section of this revolutionary toll superhighway from Kittery to Portland. Miles of paved road, much of it going through untamed land. And the mechanisms by which they were building it. I mean, they're using oxen in some parts to, to you know, grade these roads. While big machines have made road building easier, the regulations have gotten stricter. Now there are permits to pull and wetland research to be done for any expansion or readjustment. By 1955, during the boom in superhighway building happening across the country, the turnpike was extended. And while the plan was to stretch it all the way to Fort Kent, when the Interstate Act was passed, states got federal funding to build their roads, ending the self-funded turnpike in Augusta. There was at one point a plan to eliminate the tolls because the DOT was going to take things over. What happened with that plan? Well, there were some things that happened in the 70s. There was a gas shortage, uh, the Iran hostage crisis. All of these things impacted the price of fuel and how much money DOT was taking in. So their, their revenue dropped significantly. So the legislature thought it probably made sense to keep those tolls in place, especially since half of it was being paid for by out-of-staters. Now two-thirds of the turnpike tolls come from out-of-state money, and excess funding helps the DOT cover some of its projects. The history that has rolled along these 109 miles spans generations. My dad worked out here uh, for 20 years. He worked out here from 1966 to 1986. Now it's Jody Dyke who's in his 20th year working the turnpike, and his son, Andrew, has eight years under his belt. Can I'm with highway maintenance. Although his start with the highway began years earlier. On the way to the hospital, he was, he was born somewhere in the Forest Ave, Warren Ave area, southbound, headed for the hospital in the ambulance. The three generations of dykes are just a small part of the now 300 MTA employees collecting tolls, maintaining the roads, and engineering new ways to improve transportation. As for the future of the main turnpike, Chris, I thought this was interesting. There's talk of a Gorham connector to sort of alleviate some of the rush hour traffic to and from that area and talks of paying tolls through an app, no longer needing those transponders on the windshield. So meantime, in honor of its 75th birthday tomorrow, the turnpike is encouraging visitors to stop by its headquarters off of Skyway Drive in Portland and pick up a gift. That's pretty cool. Also, I, how much more uh, <laughs> serendipitous, I guess, does it get that Andy was born on the highway that yeah. his father worked on and he's eventually <laughs> going to work on, right? He was meant to be there, yeah. I believe, yeah. <laughs>